Now that we know how to write and deploy our Wave app into the H2O AI cloud, let's take a look at some of the advanced features of Wave. We are now going to do a practical applications showcase of the YouTube Chatbot app. This is actually an app that I built to easily transcribe and chat with YouTube videos. So the way this app works is that first I just have to find a YouTube video. In this case, I'm using this video of democratizing AI with the H2O AI cloud. So all I have to do is paste this YouTube link into the space and hit save. After this, this is gonna basically transcribe and analyze the video. And on the left, you can see the transcribed version of it. And on the right, you'll see a chatbot user interface. Then I can type any question that I want. For example, if I wanna say, summarize this video. Now this will go into the back end of Enterprise H2O GPTE and it will return an answer. Now, if I wanna go back and refresh, all I hit is uh, the refresh button. And then if I wanna see the demo version of this app, um, I can just toggle this button right here. And over here we can see um, the public policy challenges of AI, which is a one hour YouTube video which is fully transcribed on the left side. And if I want to hit some sample questions, such as who are the speakers in this video, it will output that. So we're going to do a deep dive into the code behind how all this works. All right, so let's dig deeper into the Wave app code behind the YouTube chatbot. So at the top, we have our imports that we're going to need. Um, and then if we look at our serve function here, we see if the client is not initialized, we're going to hit the init function. And what this is, is that it's basically um, the landing page. So we can see that we have some of our event properties. We see our theme is light. And then as for the layouts, we can see we have a header and then we have a content zone and then also the footer. And then within the content zone, we can see we have a vertical, horizontal and a grid like format. So what this essentially means is we could, uh, every time we create a card, we can assign it to any of these zones. So for example, when we create the header card, which says YouTube chatbot, ask questions about any YouTube video, we assign it to the, the header card right here, the header zone. And then over here, if we create our footer card, we essentially can use this box equals parameter to assign it to the footer zone. So let's go back and just quickly take a look at the app. So we can see we have our header card right here and then our footer right here. And then in the middle, that's our content zone. So furthermore, after, afterward, we can see these demo mode functionalities over here. What this means is all we need to know is once the user hits the demo mode toggle, it will. Uh, we wanna make sure that it matches what the client demo mode is. And this is just used so we could determine what actions to take depending on whether the toggle is on or off. Finally, we can see if we go to the home function after hitting the init, the home function essentially is once again, the part of our landing page. So we can see welcome, insert the link to your YouTube video below. And then we also have our toggle, our demo mode toggle. For the purposes of this video, we are going to focus more on the when the demo mode is off so that we can really understand the back end of how it's connected to H2OGBTE. Following this, we could essentially see that the items below variable, it calls the get input items function. Now the get input items function returns the items based on whether the demo mode is on or off. So if the demo mode is off, we can see that we have our URL text box where we enter our YouTube URL, and then we have our save and refresh button. So to go back to the app, we can see we have these first two components here, and then we have our URL, save and refresh button over here. Now going back into the code, we can see that once we have created these list of items, all we have to do is now create a page with the form card containing these user components. So we're going to assign it to the vertical zone, and then we're going to keep these two, which is the welcome text and then the demo mode button, um, we're going to keep that at the top. So that's why we're using UI.inline so that it's in one line. And then following that, we're going to have the get input items, all these three different components in the line below. Now let's talk about what happens when the user hits the save button after inserting their link. So firstly, you, you see here that once you input the link, it's stored into this variable called link. And then the page is essentially going to save that link. 
So afterward, what this is going to do is that once it saves the link, we're going to take the YouTube ID. And this is just some pre-processing to make sure that we're getting the captions of the YouTube video. So it's going to take the link, split it where it sees an equal to get the code, and then use that to get the subtitles using the YouTube API transcript. So we, we now know we have some, you know, try catch errors here. What this basically means that if, for example, there's a video which doesn't exist, or if you just type in like blah, blah, or if you type an invalid YouTube ID, a YouTube link, or some video without any captions, it will just throw this error saying, oops, seems like it's not a valid YouTube link, etc. And then afterward, it's going to open a file called video.txt, where it's going to write every single caption that there is. Then this long process dialog is exactly where you see the GIF, which says transcribing and analyzing the YouTube video. Upon this, we can see that we have to just initialize our H2O GPTE URL and key. So all you have to do is go into your environment, set, set up your H2O GPT URL and key, and assign it to these variables. Then you can access the H2O GPTE backend and essentially connect both your URL and key over there. Once that's over, we're going to create a collection onto H2O GPTE and then start our chat session. So what this chat session is going to do is we're going to take our content and video.txt is where everything is stored. Our transcription of the video is stored in this video.txt file and we're going to upload that content. So now we have two cards. So if you recall, we can see on the left, um, we have our transcribed video. And then on the right, we have our chatbot card. So over here, we can see the reference card as well as the chatbot card. And this is essentially where we're going to store the data as well as ask any question about the content of the video. Finally, after hitting save, making sure that all these different components are taken care of um, and are showing on the app, we are ready to upload the document into the collection. So what this essentially does is that it's just uploading the video.txt. This is just the name of the file. And it's going to ingest that upload with the relevant collection ID and upload ID. After this, these are just some chatbot helper functions. So we can see here q.client.chatbotinteraction. It refers to this chatbot interaction um, sort of functionality. So if I go a little bit down, we can see here that essentially what it means is whenever you type in a question, when the LLM is responding, it's, it's going to go back into the back end of it. And while it's processing, it's going to just show this yellow dot here. So every time, you know, the, the LLM is thinking, it'll just show this yellow dot. If not, it's just going to send back whatever response it's streaming. So if I go back here to the chatbot interaction, we can see here that, you know, we want to make sure that our chatbot card is showing the chatbot interaction dot content to show. So if it's showing words that the LLM is outputting, it'll show that. If not, it'll show the yellow dot. Then we're going to prepare our UI streaming function so that it can run while blocking the LLM message interaction runs. So if I look at the stream updates to UI function, it's right here below. Every one tenth of a second from our chatbot interaction, it's updating our app's UI. Now going back here, um, we're just going to, you know, hit await q.run get chat answer, and then also type in our HGOGBTE client chat session ID, as well as our chatbot interaction. So if we go down and go to get chat answer, this is actually where we connect to our H2OGBTE. So here we can see that we have our query, which says always refer to this video, to this as a video instead of a document. And this is just used because we don't want our chatbot to be like, hey, using the document to the left, um, this is the answer. We always want to make sure that it's, it's essentially saying that, hey, like this video means blank, 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 or the summary of this video is this. And then we're going to, in, inside our message variable, we're going to make sure that we put in our chatbot interaction functionality, our timeout. The timeout is basically, you know, if, if the LLM is not responding, this is the, the max amount of time um, before this app sort of times out. And then as our callback, we have our stream response, which is essentially just this function here, which updates the chatbot interaction with the LLM output. And finally, in this LLM parameter, we can see that we're using Mistral. 
I'm sure you've also realized that we have this add card and clear card. So for example, if I go up, we can see instead of, you know, this queue page chatbot card, we can see this add card functionality. And what this does is that it essentially just adds the card. So we've just written a helper function here below. So it adds the name, it takes in the queue parameter, the name, and then which type of card you want. As for the clear cards, and, and we saw this in the home function, it just means that we're going to delete that specific card on that page. So if I go up, we can see this clear cards functionality right over here. So this means that every time you know you hit the home function, it's just going to clear all the cards and you're going to be left with just this interface right here. Now you know how to create a YouTube chatbot. And you're welcome to update this app or build on top of it in any which way that you'd like.